Hello SGBers and welcome to another tutorial in the Smile Game Builder tutorial series. Today we'll be looking at pictures. It might seem straightforward to add and delete images, and it is. However, there are a number of cool techniques you can use to bring your static images to life, which I thought I'd share. There's also a bonus tutorial on how to use images for compass points, which changes the player moves around on the map. A bit like what I did with my map compass HUD plugin and scripts for RPG Maker. For anyone who's interested in those, I'll put the links in the description below. There will be a lot of playtesting in this tutorial, but I'll edit all those boring start and loading screens out. In the event panel, under display messages images, you can see three options for images, display, move and delete. All of the options here are straightforward, but we'll go through them briefly still. With the display image, you can select its display number, select an image, let's choose the title book, and you can set its XY coordinates and select the position manually. You can zoom in. Now fade in is, as it says, fades the picture in. If this is unchecked it'll show right away. Make translucent is basically to set the image at about half opacity. Let's do a side by side comparison. You can see the difference there. The translucent image partially shows the map below. This is useful I guess for those certain image overlays like map HUDs or maybe even frames. Delete image is as straightforward as it sounds. There's also an option to fade the image out as it's deleted. Note that in the panel instead of saying delete they've chosen change graphic to hidden exactly the same thing. Move image is easy as well they've used jump instead of move except it doesn't really jump to anywhere. The term isn't that important because we both know that it does the same thing moves the image from one place to another. So again you can select the position to move to manually and you can zoom in after it's moved. So let's do a little play test if we move that to here. and you see it moves. It'll move from its initial coordinates set in display to the coordinates you say set in move. Interestingly setting the jump duration to zero seems to negate any move and just displays the image on screen. It doesn't like jump instantly across. So if you set the jump duration to between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5, the image moves almost instantaneously. Like that. Almost. Now with the zoom, I don't know what the maximum is. But it doesn't seem to go. Let's have. Well, okay. But anyway, the maximum. It doesn't seem to go any further than 300% zoom.
like so. You can also set the zoom to 0% for it to zoom all the way back out and it will eventually disappear. Like so. Technically it's still on screen, it's just very, very small. So I always like adding a delete image after it's finished just to declutter. When using zoom it's important to note that it will use the specified XY coordinates as the center point. This is all based around the absolute center that is where these crosshairs meet in relation to the position of the image. This will always be the center point and then the image will revolve around that based on the coordinates you set both in the display image and the move to. Um, as an example let's okay let's set X to 1015 and Y to 645 which is actually off screen and then we'll set the zoom to 300 percent and then let's see what happens there you can see Setting the duration will obviously slow it down a lot. So let's switch things around and we'll have the display image as 1015 and then the Y coordinate at 645 and then the zoom is 300. And then how about we have this slow this down a bit then we have four f four four eight for the X and 645 for the move and then we'll change the zoom to zero As you can see, it zooms in, centering on the specific coordinates, then we'll zoom out, starting off from there, using the, cent the center of the crosshairs as the base, and then it'll move across and disappear. But because it's off screen, it won't actually show up. We won't get to see that. Here, I've used a much larger image for this tutorial but with the smaller images, it'll work in the same way. You'll just have a smaller area to for, for the zoom offsets and it might not work in the same way. It's just a matter of experimenting I guess until you get it right. Now with that out of the way we'll set up a basic compass which will move according to the direction the player is traveling in. First we need to set up our event and it will be set to automatically synchronize and remember that you'll have to copy and paste this on each map to display because parallel events only work on the maps they're used on it doesn't run in the background when you change maps like RPG Maker's common event does we need to use the advanced variable box and we need to create four variables for each key up, right, down and left. So this would be key up K 
key right. Key down. And finally, key left. And then under how, we have key input and set it, like so. For each corresponding values, so we'll just copy and paste them real quick and change these accordingly. right like so and then key down and finally key left so just to verify we have up right down and left when dealing with the key input function Whenever a key is used, it will return one of three values. It will return two when the key in is initially pressed, one when the key is held down, and negative one when it's released. These are important for when it comes to determining the next set of values. Next, we place four conditional branches based on which key is already pressed and then to display the corresponding images for the compass directions so we'll use variable box check and then we set variable for up to 1 and then under the yes we will display the image in this case, I have imported the same graphics, the same icons that I used in RPG Maker. So up is north, let's position it to, I don't know, 24 by 24, just because it's it'll be slightly out of the top left hand corner and then we can again copy and paste this key right which would be east and again south and finally key left where the image would be west um, like so and then before we proceed, we will need to copy this and paste it in the house. As you can see, I've just changed the map layout a little bit to make it easier. You can just open a folder and then add a map and then drag and drop it into the appropriate one. This, this actually makes it a lot, lot easier to find things, especially on the larger maps. So I apparently I already apparently I already put that there. Forgot to delete it. Anyways, does it, it's the same thing, just to make sure. And paste. So now when we play test it, we can see how it actually works. And as you can see, moving up, right down and left. The little icon here will change according to direction. Now 
Now watch what happens when we enter the house, which is set to first person view. Hello, out of the way. As you can see, changes direction. Incidentally, you can hold shift and press left or right to strafe in that direction. So you will literally have forward, back, strafe left, straight right, strafe right. And the direction changes accordingly, but when we move around normally using the keys, it will still change according to the direction according to the direction that you are turning. And then when we press forward or back see that's not actually north. If we if we assume that this is north, when we turn left, ha huh, it's messes things up first person view this is because different rules apply for different movement types um, for this I guess we can add more variables based on the camera settings or at least another one like say for instance so for this we can you we can use another variable for the camera settings and as you can see mode gives the options for normal which would return zero and one which would reserve which would be for the first person view so you can add another conditional branch and set up the compass points accordingly um, unfortunately I haven't quite figured out how to do this effectively as SGB has no feature to store the actual direction the player is facing it just stores the key press for moving up, right, down and left or turning left and right. So this creates some challenges. I believe I've figured out how to do this but it's just a matter of fine-tuning some of the details now hence this may be something I'll look at for another tutorial and so this would only really be useful for those normal or overhead maps but it works and it's effective now on SGB's official Facebook page someone asked how to create a splash screen well Roberto this is for you bear in mind that splash screens cannot be displayed before the start screen but they can be implemented after you select a new game to show the splash before gameplay proper so for this all you need to do is create a new as normal and um, map as you can see I've just changed things around a bit splash screen the default map will fill it with an ocean However, we don't want that, or maybe we do. But under terrain, there is a black. So we fill it with that. And you'll have a blank black map to start with. Obviously, this is also where we'll be putting the start point. Like so. And then we create a blank event set to triggered one time. And under player movement, make the player transparent. Um, display image. Let's use the title logo for this and then we will centralize it a bit that's about right 158 and select fade in 
and then add a weight which is under special effects music wait time I don't know maybe 2.5 seconds and then finally under that weight we have the delete But you know what? That's boring. Let's up the ante. Um, if we change the x, y coordinates to x equals 0 and y is negative 200, which I believe is slightly off the top of the screen, we can add a move event and then we'll use the same coordinates that we did before 158 to centralize it it'll move downwards towards the center before fading out like so similarly we can do left to right so x would be rate 90 again I think that's slightly off to the center and then we reset this to 158 and then we'll keep this as it is there it scrolls from off center to the center fades again and if we want to move it off to the right after the weight event we can copy and paste this and change the settings to well, it would be x890 because that would be the opposite on the opposite side it after the weight like so and then it'll move off to the right now let's up the ante even further um, we can move the logo from left from yeah from from left to center zoom it in then back out to the center then move it again from the center to the right so we would add a second event after the first one like so this time around zoom is 2 per 200 percent um, and then we add another we copy that one paste it after the first event change it back to 100 And then another weight. I think we'll I think we'll change this down to 1.5 seconds each of the weights. So the results are like that. You can experiment with the various settings in this manner for the results you're looking for, and that is about it I believe we've run out of time or coming close to it so I'll stop here and consider the next tutorial I will revisit pictures at a later time notably for a few ideas I have such as displaying an image and cancelling it with a key press and moving an image around the screen just ideas at the moment I don't know if or how these can be done yet 
But before I end the video, I'd like to give a shout out to Jacob Mann once again. You may remember if you have if you've been following my series or the Smile Game Builder Facebook page. He's responsible for the animated talking tree model. He's done it again with his amazing monster natural habits. Be sure to check this out. I'll put the links below and incidentally he's going to release a monster pack at some point. And as always, like and subscribe if you want more tutorials or visit my Twitter, Facebook and the RPG Maker Times blogs. All of the links are below in the description. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.